Nyaradzo, we strive to continuously bring convenience to our clients. Nyaradzo Group is proud to introduce Sawi, a new virtual chatbot assistant on WhatsApp. With Sawi, you are now able to interact with us from the comfort of your home and can be assisted anytime via WhatsApp. With life assurance products, diaspora products, applying and assessing your policy, payment platforms, claims information, and any other queries concerning payments, policy information, or products and services. Simply WhatsApp Sawi on plus 263-712-992892 or visit the link showing on the screen to register and start interacting and receiving notifications from Sawi on WhatsApp. Now, join in and experience a new level of convenience 24 hours a day with Sawi. Welcome to another exciting episode of In Touch with the Legend. This show is brought to you by Nyarazo Group. Yes, Sawira Mukuru. Today in the show, we've got a very popular legend. He traveled from Cholocho to Blawayo to Harare to Cyprus to South Africa. He has been all over. He has world traveled. This is for you, Joel Lupasha. They call him Dubai, Dubai 7. He's going to get to tell us how you got that nickname, Dubai 7. But for now, we want to know, Joel, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you so much, my dear Chen. Thank you. Yeah, Joel, you I am going to tell you, Joel, I am going to tell you, I am going to tell you, where did you all start? Okay, thank you. Um, Joel Pasha, the footballer, uh, started in uh, at Los K Primary School. Uh, that is in Plawayo. Mm. I know a lot of people, they think I grew up uh, from Cholocho, from, from an early age, but uh, I was staying in Plawayo. Uh, that's where I did my primary school from grade mm. one up to seven, at Lois K in Gubenja. That's where we stayed. Uh, that is when uh, I met uh, Kombuzo Panda, uh, the former Zimbabwe Saints yes. uh, defender and captain. Uh, he's the one who took me to Zimbabwe Saints Juniors uh, when there was the late journey. Ku primary, but wait, you were playing soccer ku primary school? Yeah, I was playing soccer. That, okay. But uh, I, I wouldn't say I was the best uh, in terms of <laughs> okay. football. Mm. Well, my calling was athletics. Okay. Uh, I, you were a sprinter. I was the best in school, yeah, 100 meters, 200 meters. Yeah, we could say. I, I was the best. So yeah. that, that's what I was focusing more on mm. until my, my cousin brother, Skumbuzu Panda, mm. said, I know with your speed, maybe you can help us uh, in the juniors, uh, good sense. So I, I, I went to, to train with them, but uh, the coaches, they didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Which age group was that? Uh, the under 14. Under 14, okay. But I was very skinny, so yeah. I, it, was, it was really, really difficult for me uh, to play football. And, I had never uh, won uh, the football boots. So, yeah, so yes. when I went there, they borrowed me these boots, and it was the worst, the worst game I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> I think I lost it. Koma <laughs> 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 Chuchu was. Uh, I, I, we, Who was coaching? Who was the coach? Chuchu. I was Koma Chuchu. Oh, okay. Coach yes. Yes. okay. I, yeah. he, he, he coached him. Mm. Most of these more percent uh, okay, legends, yes. yeah. So he said, I have a big problem. Let your cousin stick to, to uh, athletics. To athletics. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it discouraged me a little bit, and yeah. then I went back to at school. I was playing because mm. it was easy, they would just put the ball behind the house, and you run for everybody, you yeah. know, and uh, score goals. But uh, I, I decided to stick to athletics. Uh, during my primary school, but then I grew up in a in a family where we we were you know we had this village village mind village mentality. When we close schools, we when we close on Tuesday, that same Tuesday, we went to Oh So yeah. I'll close schools, then I'll go to Cholocho. Oh, Cholocho, the one who Yeah. Oh, okay. Mushi. 
when I get to Cholocho, I yeah. became this superstar in mm. football. But that is when I realized that I, I am but a good footballer. Yeah. I am a good yes. footballer. What are these people saying? Mm. What are they saying? You know, when, when I'm in Pulawayo, uh, they were saying another person, a sprinter. But when I'm in Cholocho, I, I, I could tell for sure. But I'm good. Yeah. So I think going to Cholocho, you know, it built my career. It, it kept yeah, it gives confidence. you confidence. Yes, I can do this thing. Mm. So, uh, at primary, I focused only on athletics. I, I, I won a lot of uh, medals Medal. yeah, during that time. And then I went to Kifot High School. That is when I, I think I, I started to really play football. Mm. At Kifot High, that's where I did my, my all level form one up until form four. Yeah. So there it was it was different. I, I, I forgot about going back to Zimbabwe Sense, but I focused only on, on school football. I played yeah. I played football. I also did uh, athletics from there. Uh, up until I finished my form four. Then uh, I went to, to Cholocho now to stay in Cholocho because I had finished uh, my yeah. O level. I no uh, desire to, to go to Form 5 mm. or, or, or A level. I didn't want to do that. I just said, O oh, level is okay. Mm. Uh, I want to play football. I told myself that uh, if football cannot uh, take me where I want to, then I'll maybe pursue athletics. Okay. So yes. it was just a matter of balancing the two. But uh, I remember when I finished uh, my O level, I didn't study well. I didn't study uh, that much uh, because uh, my focus, you know, when you're coming from Cholocho, there is this mentality that uh, once you finish school, or you, whether it's primary or secondary, one has to go, has to trek to South Africa, you know, yeah. in Jivas, to be in Jiva. Eh? So I had this also. So you had this mind. in your yeah, mind that, you I'm know, I'm going to go I'm, I'm do we do we that we, we, you can't take it from my mind. Yeah. You, know, you can't take it from who I am. Mm. So I had this uh, mind that soon after I finish, I'm going to South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, because two of my friends were already there in South Africa. They had already sent uh, two bicycles each, and I was like, ah, guys. I mean, <laughs> that was like, well, hey, well, no, we're we're guys in Jiga. Jiga. Now they yeah. have bicycles, but <laughs> nothing. Yeah. So um, before we even got the all uh, level results out, I, 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 I told myself, no, I, I think I failed because I, I didn't start, I didn't yeah. prepare myself well, you know, the way I'll prepare when I'm going for athletics and stuff like that. So... I, I, I went to Cholocho, then uh, there was a guy uh, who was transporting people wanted to go to South Africa. If you don't have money, you will take any form mm. of, of payment. Uh, so I remember uh, stealing my mom's biggest coat. <laughs> <laughs> to pay, to pay my uh, how, did to do, how, did, how did you do it? At night? Yeah, you at went night. To the... I, because I, I had already planned my, yeah. my, my, my stuff and I had mm. already spoken to, to the guy that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I remember taking the biggest court, you know, uh, and paying that guy that he will take me to South Africa. And he did so. And uh, I, went to, I went to South Africa. But uh, I, I think I lasted two days. Because, uh, you know, people, sometimes people let you down. You know, people that you look up to, people that you expect, uh, they have your back, mm. will let you down. So, and also such, uh, such things, I think they prepared me for who I am today. You know, understanding that you cannot rely on people. Yeah, it was like a blessing in disguise. To, Lesson learned. Exactly, yeah. Mm. So uh, I was denied uh, accommodation when, when I got there. Uh, the people that I had gone to, uh, they couldn't accommodate me. So uh, I had to go to the street. I had no passport, I had nothing. And then uh, I was arrested uh, by the police. Oh, oh. 
for for not having the the papers and stuff like that. And then it was it it was still difficult. It was not like now, you know. It was yeah. very strict. So I was transported back to 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 Messina. I stayed there for two. In charge that truck change. Yeah, Gumba Gumba. Hey, what Yeah. What an experience. So I yeah. I, I went to Messina, uh, but the this uh, thing that if the Gumba Gumba is not yet full, it cannot transport you back to Bybridge. Oh, so okay. you have to wait until Nichizari. until Nichizari. Yes. So I had uh, I had to wait for two weeks. Uh, during those two weeks, we used to have these matches whereby the cards would be playing versus the inmates. Uh, my first match when we played is, is inmates. Uh, I was outstanding. So after that, I, I used to play for, for the inmates. For the guards yeah, team now. The guards team. <laughs> yeah, you get a favor. This yeah. one is our player. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it kept me going yeah. for those two weeks. Then we were sent back to, to Pipe Bridge. Then now I had to trek back to to Cholo. To Cholo. Eh, and boots here, here now. Abang boots gone. Abang, we no see what we do. Musa, Musa, Eru. Now we have to go back to to Cholo. That is when uh, everything uh, started. That yeah. is when everything started. Because now I knew that uh, I've got no other way. I have to make this I work. I have to make this work. It has to uh, work. So there was uh, social social league in Cholo. That was being played. I think twelve teams that were playing social league there in Cholo. So I joined one of the clubs, and uh, the coach he, he couldn't believe what he was saying. You know, yeah. he, he just told me, "You you are going to to be a very very good football, a famous one, but you need to to work. Don't worry well, where you are. Don't worry. You are in Cholo, but I know that one day." Uh, someone, someone will find you. Somebody will find you. Yes. Somebody will recognize you. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. So That's it happened it that uh, uh, Matinda it is a business there of selling vegetables in Cholocho. In Cholocho. He bring his, yeah, his goods to Cholocho there. So, Matinda Love? Yeah, Matinda Love, yeah. Okay. So he, he just came to, to watch one of our games. Where one of the social happened, matches? Yeah, and it happened that my team was playing. And uh, from then, he didn't speak to me. He just white. He saw me. Then he went to Blawa and he spoke to, to Raman and, and his map. That guys, I, I saw a gem in Cholocho. Mm. If you don't act, Vana and Anotorone, the other clubs. I, I saw this boy just go and find out. Mm. So before they even came, uh, uh, I joined uh, another team. It was a division two side that was based in Nyamandlov. You know, Nyamandlov is just uh, close to Cholo. Close to Cholo, yeah. yes. So it it was called Masiza <clears throat> FC. It was in division two, and um, we we would play in in Blawai, the games. But the team was based in in Nyamandlov, so we travel yeah. from Cholo to Nyamandlov. Maybe on a Friday uh, for matches. I, I never trained with them. Uh, they would just. Uh, pick you up for the game. Pick me up for the games. Mm. Or go and play in Plawayo when we were playing away. When we were playing at home, he had built a very beautiful uh, ground in, in Yamalov there in, in, from the farms. Mm. So we'll play uh, versus these other clubs. That, then Gunyan corrugated now. They, they saw me, they were playing in Division 1. And then they spoke to Masis and said, No, we want the boy. Yeah. So I went and joined Gunyan corrugated. That is when his more presence saw me when again, playing, yeah, when I was playing for yeah, uh, and Matinda kept telling people, I told you guys that uh, this boy, look now, his more presence is snatched him. So the small person snatched you. Yeah. Oh, now with a graduate, I didn't have a problem with that. Yeah. So, some some people have got such an attitude. Yeah. 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 I remember Zimsens were beaten seven one by Highlanders over the weekend. Mm. So uh, Ronald Smander came home. He said, ah, Joe, I think you you can help us." Because there, there was a lot of uh, exodus from Zimbabwe Saints players that had left uh, going to join Amazul and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that time, yeah, that yeah, period. That yes. period. So I, I, I went to, to Zimbabwe Saints the first week 
and there was a coach left Joey Mkatsa in Lubong mm. and Muff. those were the two coaches that were there and uh, that same week I was registered uh, we were playing Wange uh, over the weekend uh, at, at, at BF so I remember the first first touch because uh, the first touch that I had it was a call uh, mm. we, we, it was our center we won the center we won, we won the toss it was our center the ball was played from the center to Matamba Nash then he just moved forward and with my speed yeah. I, I think <laughs> yeah. they were surprised because <laughs> yeah. I think it was the first three minutes I had a scored yeah. and I didn't last that game you know PF you have played it Papa yeah, Kills, very uh, tough and stuff that time, my yeah. first time my first time to play you need to be fit in there yeah you need, I think I, I lasted 33 minutes yeah I was substituted because uh, the, we, the said, uh, <laughs> we felt yeah. you were going to die mm. so when we were playing that match West Off was on the stands you know, my, my career just, it, it happened so fast. Everything yeah, things were just happened. moving. They were just moving, you yeah. know, the pace that they were moving. What was Mr. Uh, of doing then? He, he was the national team coach. Yes, at that time. So he, oh, so he was traveling. He was, he was traveling, traveling around. Watching. Yeah, traveling okay, around. Yeah. So, and then he noticed me. And he, he was asking people, who's this boy? I know he played. You did three minutes, is it? Yeah, did three minutes, yes. but there is something special that exactly, yeah. reminds me of Noah. Good Kaki, coaches know that, he, yes. He's quick, but he reminds me of this guy uh, coach in Nigeria, Noah Kokan and stuff. So he, he spoke to Gibson Novel, I think, and uh, because then Gibson Novel was the national under 23 coach. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to draft this boy into the under 23s. You know, just 33 minutes. Yeah. And um, now, because Islanders have seen what I have done, they started to make noise now. They will go to my father and, ah, how can you let this boy go and play for Zimbabwe CNC? Hey, yeah, a bigger so, club, you know, yeah. yeah. So now when you go home, you, you find that attitude, you, you know, from the family. It's my dad, you, you know. You, and you ask yourself, what have I done? Is there something wrong that I've done? Mm. But they, they didn't tell me now that uh, the the Islanders manager was home. Or we are just yeah, poker are from behind. Poker. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. So I think I played only three months at Islanders. Three months at Islanders. Yeah. Then there was the window, and the, uh, the pressure from home. It was just too much. Now I don't in Bulawayo. There is no parent who. Oh, you played for three months in Zimbabwe, say? Yeah, I played for yeah. three months. And there's no parent who can say no to Islanders. Yeah. And especially... Uh, especially that time. The team manager, and it's my paper, I, he, was, he was pushing. Mm. He was pushing. You know, that man is very, very intelligent. When he wants you, he will get you. Yeah. You bring groceries at home. You, when you get home, you find their groceries. Yeah. Wait, they <laughs> Team manager was here, yeah. you know, yeah, but in the end, yeah, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. I had to, to come with a more guide as well. As, and yeah, but come with a hard game with the Highlanders is yeah, bigger. I Highlanders can play again, you know, growing up, uh, watching the, those uh, Mercedes wonders of, of this world, uh, yeah. the Peter Lovus, the Adam Lovus, for me, it was a dream. It was mm -hmm. really a dream that was coming true. But it sense also I had this uh, love relationship because my cousin brothers played for Zimbabwe Saints. Yeah. Maybe people that they don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm related to Karakai Rotsi and Innocent Rotsi. The oh, the, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. They are, they're your cousin? Yeah, they are mother oh. and my dad. Yeah, they're siblings. Sisters, yeah. yeah okay. So for me, it was like I'm playing for the family, for, for the family yeah. team. So, okay. yeah. But uh, when the Islanders came, it was difficult. It was very, very difficult to say no. And um, I remember my first day training, you know, people calling me Cholocho and stuff like that. <laughs> that was I'm your first Cholocho. nickname in Ireland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Cholocho. Uh, yeah. Cholocho. Yeah. 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 And also at Ireland, as my first game, it was uh, versus Dynamos, my first match versus Dynamos. 
uh, for that uh, it was a one year celebration uh, econet yeah uh, econet yeah uh, econet was celebrating one year uh, so there was uh, the, the tournament the, the, it was called but it was party challenge but the challenge yeah, yes i remember the party challenge sports, yes. yes so we came that was your first match that was my first match that was yeah. big how do you feel it was enormous uh, yeah in my first time to be on the plane because we flew from plaway to yeah, from Plaway to, yeah. to Arari we flew and i remember a man uh, you know uh, first, how do you feel flying for the first time i was scared what if, yeah. I'm scared, you know, when you are thinking, what if something? <laughs> <laughs> so I kept sending people. Yeah. Check, check, on check, on check on him. Check on him. Is yeah. he okay? And you know, they save food on the plane, and yeah. you call me and say, "Don't worry, just eat. I've paid." I've paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So. That was my first match, and we won 1-0. I scored. Did you play yeah, in the yeah. first eleven? Yeah, yeah, first tell, eleven. Tell, tell, me what was going on. What was going on in your mind? You are, you are, you are playing for the biggest team in Blawayo. Uh, you are playing against the Dynamo's the biggest team in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and this is like the battle of Zimbabwe. And this is your first match. Uh, for, How was for me, what was just being on? there mm. was was like you know I, I I've made it. I've done it. You were not panicking. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah. I was scared. You know, seeing the likes of Masema Tinyiru and Vinti Fulao, the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. I think then it was Chirambadar. You know, these people that you grew up uh, watching, and it was it, it, it was really scary. Yeah, it was really scary. But uh, we won one zero. I scored that uh, solitary. You actually scored. Yeah, yeah. On your debut. Yeah. At Highlanders mm -hmm. against Dynamo. Against Dynamo. What a way to start your career yeah. in Blois. Yeah. So uh, on Monday, I, I couldn't wait, you know, to go and buy the newspaper and uh, sit there. Mm -hmm. to look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just hold on. Just hold on. There. We, we just gonna go for a break. When we come back, we want to hear what you did. How much money did you spend on buying the newspapers? How many newspapers did you buy? You put much money on it. So good one. Oh, we got to talk about it. We got to Let's talk about it after the break, guys. We just gonna go for a break. When you come back, we wanna hear more about Joel Lupasha. He is here in touch with the legend. Proudly brought to you by Nyarazo Group. My name is Yvonne Mangonda, Marketing and Communications Manager for Dynamos. And being part of the Nyaradzo family has helped the club a lot because they obviously bought a bus for the team. And every time we travel to matches as far as Wange, Chiredzi, Motare, they provide fuel for our team. I'm God knows Murgira, Dynamo's football club player. It's a privilege working with Nyarazo. Nyarazo bought us a bus which we use for our training and all our matches. My name is Apia Sylvester from Ghana, Dynamo's FC football player. I'm happy to be part of the Scope Pack Plan. It covers unlimited members of your family. My name is Emmanuel Jalai, Dynamo's FC player. Make sure you join Nyarazo. A scopic plan because if you join Nyarazo scopic plan, you get grocery allowance on your funeral. My name is Albert Yonde, Dynamo's football club player from Cameroon. It's always good to have company like Nyarazo supporting us. When you get the Scopec plan, you're also supporting the Dynamo's football club. My name is Sutena Muringai, Dynamo's football player. Get the Nyarazo Scopec plan to cover your family and support the Dynamo's football club. I'm Nyarazo Dia, Dynamo's football club goalkeeper. When you get the Nyarazo Scopec plan, all the children under the age of 23 are covered for free.
So as Dynamos, we're very excited and we're also very grateful to Nyaradzo for what they've done for the club. But we're also grateful to every Dynamo supporter that is part of the Nyaradzo Skull Pack plan. And you can also make your contribution. Join the Nyaradzo Skull Pack plan today. Join the Skull Pack plan today. Get the Nyaradzo Skull Pack plan today. Get the Nyaradzo Skull Pack plan today. Yes, football fans, welcome back in touch with the legend. We've got Joel Upasha in the studio. He played his first game for Highlanders against Dynamo at the National Sports Stadium. And guess what? They beat Dynamo by one goal to zero. And he is the one who scored. And we are hearing that he actually bought a newspaper for himself. Now I was just asking him, didn't you buy five, ten newspapers for the other guys to actually read? <laughs> Tell us about it. You know, how was it? How was the feeling when you woke up in the morning and you go buy a newspaper and you... You are there. You had scored against the animals. Uh, where, where I stay uh, or where I grew up in Nilo mm. uh, it was a town uh, that was filled with a lot of uh, PSL footballers. You know, yeah. We had wrestlers, uh, footballers, we had uh, players from Zinsens, we had uh, players from Highlanders, and also players from uh, D1 teams, uh, the big teams. So, yes. you know, we when somebody is done well, we, we come together. Maybe we used to go and and, and sit outside Ronald Kitiza's house. You know, mm. we would just go there and read the newspaper, share the newspaper because then it was difficult also to buy a newspaper. You know, so if one has the newspaper, we'll just go there. Yeah, share, yeah, share, share the, the newspaper. newspaper yeah. yeah, but uh, the support was good. It, uh, it was never. Uh, about playing for rival teams, but the fact that we grew up from the same area, yeah. so we'll just go and sit there and support each other. If one is done well, we go there. Well done, my brother. Mm. You know. So on on a Monday, I bought the newspaper because yeah. I done something, and the fact that uh, Ronald is one who also urged me to come with him to Zimbabwe Saints. Mm. So I always felt that. He, I owed him, you know, yeah. something. Now that I was in Thailand as a bigger club, you know, and we'll just uh, go there and sit, you know, and have a chat. Uh, others would have played well, others maybe would have lost. So it was just uh, our way of starting our week. Mm. But uh, I remember my dad in the evening coming home with the newspaper and saying, yeah, it work. He, Oh, but did you, you find that thing or I go, or yeah. thing or I go, you just did. I didn't know what, mm. what you did until I got to work and people were asking Mr. Alpaja, did you see your son on the newspaper? Mm. And he went to buy the newspaper also. And, you know, coming from a modest home, it's, it, it was really, really a, a proud time, yeah. a proud moment, proud for, moment yes. for him. Yeah, but uh, at least something is about to happen here yeah. and there was pressure you, you know I, I I know when I, I say this that a lot of uh, footballers uh, former footballers will understand mm. what I'm trying to say that most of us we didn't come from steady homes you know mm. we were coming from broken homes who come from you know uh, uh, poor homes it, it was really difficult yeah. so when something like that is about to happen you know, your parents will be very happy. Yeah. They, they now start pushing you. Pushing now you they can the, see, the, you know. Now proper support now. There's, there's yeah. something that's about to happen. Something is yeah. happening, but yes. But when you're starting out, it's difficult. Because yeah, I'm not skeptical. They know, yeah, don't know exactly where this was. Yeah. This is going. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah, you know, sometimes you'll sneak out just to end up with training. You'll sneak out to be just uh, And uh, also such things, you know, I just want to say to, to anybody who's watching, if you have uh, your son who's very talented in football, please support them. Mm. Do not think that football is, 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 is a bad career. Football is business now. Football is good. Mm. Uh, if your, your child is not academically good, please don't keep pushing them. You yeah. help them. For academics, make sure that they understand what they're doing. You know, So uh, that kind of support is what uh, we, we 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 didn't have before because football then it was 
kind of change mana utamba pora it is it look you know like it's not a good uh, not a good career, career choice career yeah. choice until he, your son is gone outside the country yes. that's when people will see now you know because the returns are always good yeah so i'm sure the parents now they were seeing something that you know there's something that support up in in the start of support support you know yeah. praying for me every day and making sure that uh, I'm, I'm protected and how did your career go at highlanders now it was i i mm. i really don't think i had one game at highlanders to be frank that i'll say i played bad yeah. i don't remember myself playing bad that's why even now uh, the highlanders fans they still you know respect me they still love me they still love me because yeah. they never saw me uh, donning that black and white jersey and having a bad day but how did you feel playing for Highlanders now you're playing for Highlanders you're getting onto that field Baba field is always yeah, packed yeah. Uh, mm. like I say that my first game was versus Dynamos at the national sports then the second game I see the home game now the home yes. game was versus Restas yeah. like a derby yeah a derby at PF yes. and you get there yeah, at one o'clock uh, it's it's packed to to the rafters you look people have been seated you know inside my fans around yeah uh, in the, it, it uh, for me it was it it was too much you had arrived you know, come, come, <laughs> coming all the way from Cholocho, yeah. and then you've got 30,000 people now that are rooting for you and you know i remember uh, running into uh, into pf for home up Mm -hmm. And these people from Cholocho, you know, the, you can, you can, you, you can, can hear, you can hear them, no, the accent, the voice, I know that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I scored also on, on that day. Uh, we won uh, three one. I first two games, two yeah, goals. First, I, got, I played. I I think I scored my first two games. I scored yeah. every game. I That's a record that has never that, that uh, has never been written. First, that has never been told. My first two games uh, at Poso, I scored every game. Uh, wow. Up until uh, I think I I. I the, we played Chapungu at PF. I scored a hat trick. I think that was my first hat trick. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember scoring. It's that. among amongst the, those 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 twelve games. Yeah, yeah. So it was beautiful. Yeah. Playing with Zenzo, uh, Zenzo Moyo in Chapungu. Yes, I was just about to ask you know, who, 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 who were the players who played with. The combination was just something else, and I think it started from you know off the pitch. Uh, how mm. how we we treated each other because uh, me and Tawan Masa we had this similarity you know in uh, when when you look at us you would think you the stage yeah, of, yes Banufanana yeah, so and we had played Kuhunyani Korakete together okay you yeah. know as, as as the two strikers so we had a lot of understanding mm. a lot of good understanding then we had Zenzo also so I think the three of us what helped us it was off the pitch we were like brothers. Yeah. We we understood each other, so it became easy, became mm. very easy to to play together. There was no rival between the three of us. I was more happy to 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 create goals for them. Yeah, you were the chief I assist. Was, I was not a, a very very good scorer like Zenzo and Taban. Yeah, they were really good. Yeah, they were very very good. So for mm. me, if I created for them. I was very happy because that was my job. This is what Raman Kumbu wanted me to do, to you know, to, to create goals for them. But uh, those first games, I was lucky that I was also uh, scoring goals. So it 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 was a, uh, for me a, a good time, very 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 uh, good time in Thailand. As I never had a, a bad day, and mm. the executive also at that time. That the, those guys were very, very good. Well, where, where, people, where, where, where uh, the, the guys chairman, in the, the chairman was the late mm. James Mangwana. Yes. Yeah, James Mangwana was the chairman, and uh, the executive was just good. You know, they understood us. We, I, I we had no problems financially, uh, even though money was, uh, you know, 
but we, we never get these strikes to say, yeah, if, if there's no money. And I remember at one stage, uh, Matarai Koposo, uh, I think we had played in the, we were playing the, the, the Champions League and they owed us some money and they, they set us down. They said, now boys, uh, you, you've been good. Uh, so we spoke to Botswana supporters they are faxing your money, and yeah. and here we are. We, we didn't even know that money cannot be faxed, and they told us that <laughs> your money will be faxed. Yeah. So, and we went to play football, yes. you know, because we were told the money is coming. The money will be faxed. <laughs> it will be faxed. Yeah, and then <laughs> on a Monday. Now you start, you sit down, and you're like, ah, but guys, how, 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 how do you fax how, money? How do you fax money? <laughs> but you know, and already we have played, so it yeah. was the. The way the executive treated us, that we, we didn't have to, to ask them, we didn't question them anything because yeah. we believed in them. They, they tried their best, they really tried their best, yeah. So, is that the same year that you also won the league? When you the first year that you yeah, arrived, did you win the year, league? Yeah. My, my first year at Islanders, we won the league. Yeah. That's when you played in the Champions League the That's next when season. You played in the Champions league. Tell us about the Champions League. How did you feel to play in the Champions League? No, it was difficult. Very, very difficult. It's totally different to yeah. to the league. The, the mentality. There are so many things that happens when you play in Champions League that people might not understand. Okay, let us know. know. Sometimes, what are those when, things? When you when you are seeing failing, uh, people might think yeah, these guys, you know, they're failing us. And you have to give it to Dynamos for what they, they have done before in the Champions League, reaching the finals, reaching the semi-finals. It's not easy. It's never easy. It's mm. never easy. The, the, the mind games in Africa uh, compared to how we do it here. You know, Zimbabwe is a very, very hosp hospitable uh, country. The clubs also, you know, we welcome our, our visitors with, with love and openings. Mm. But Zimbabwe and clubs must understand that when you play in Champions League, it is, it is war. You yeah. just have to do anything and everything to win. This is what happens when you go to African Safari. Uh, I remember we played uh, Sepulti Party, mm. a, a team from uh, Cameroon. We beat them at BF3 uh, uh, mm. And uh, we just wanted uh, to go there and finish them off so that we go into the, uh, the, the group stages the group stage. where there is a lot of money. But uh, we were not prepared for that. We thought, you know, the way when you, you come to play Caps United in Harare, you wait by, you go to, to your hotel, you've got your meals, there's peace, and you go to, to Rofaro or to National Sports, get Rovura, Pinda, Mutambapur. But Ugo, it's, it's totally different. They'll mm -hmm. give you a hotel whereby they know you're not going to sleep. They, they, the, the treatment is not good. They will frustrate you mm. so that uh, by the time you go into the field, your mind is already wet up. Your mind is already wet up. And we went there, we lost the Renil. Then shootouts. We, we lost the Renil and we went to shootouts and we, we missed. I was one of the guys that missed the penalty. Uh, together with the, uh, the team captain, Via and uh, Gifty Lung, that's the three of us that missed uh, the sport kicks. Yeah. But the, the treatment that we got there, it was bad. Yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, Johnny Ngozo here on the show uh, in our first season. He talked about the game in, uh, in Egypt against yeah. Al Ali. Were, 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 were in the game? No, I had already left. Oh, but, uh, okay. I, 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 I know everything about uh, that game. Yeah, he told us a funny story that yeah. like, my was good and all they wanted to do was to go and sleep. <laughs> so uh, I thought you were part of that squad as no, well. No, I had already left. So Africa Africa Safari is totally different and our clubs needs to be prepared. Okay, so you had left. Where, where did you go from Islanders? You had left now. Where did you go um, from Ireland? Like I say, that my career was just flowing and everything. I felt like... Uh, Things were just for, happening. For me, yeah. God had already said, uh, this is yeah. what's going to happen destiny. about you. The destiny was already set. Mm. Uh, because uh, Ram, Raman Kumbu facilitated a move for Zenzo Moyo and Walter, Walter Chuma. Because uh, there was a club in Cyprus that wanted two strikers to come uh, for a trial there. So it happened that Walter 
got injured over the weekend whilst was playing for Amazon. He told, I think he, his muscle, he couldn't travel. So those guys then said, no, can you give us somebody give us another, can come yeah, and yeah, and when Raman said, ah, but Joe, you, you're playing with Zenzu. You guys have been partnering each other now for, for these two seasons. Why don't you go? Then he spoke to those people that, no, I'm going to send a, a replacement for Walter Chuba. And we, we, we flew out, we went to Cyprus. Uh, and f to, to them now, that club, it was like in Damba, Sir. Yeah, with mm. the, the, the guy, that, the guy that they wanted, you yeah. know, is no longer coming. But we are come. So when we got there, they, they looked down on me, you know. They only recognize Zenzu because yeah. they'd seen him, they'd heard about him, his scoring, exploits and everything. Yeah. But they'd not heard anything about me. So we, we arrived there we, to have a, a trial for two weeks. Uh, my, my first training, the coach was surprised. Our first training session, you were surprised with mm. what you were saying, you know, yeah. the, the, the technical ability that he yes. had and the, the power of sprinting, you know. So we, we, we stayed two days in Cyprus, then we went out for, for pre-season in Balkari, where we had to play a lot of games there. And that is where I sealed uh, my move. Yeah. That is where I convinced them that uh, I was the real deal. I can sure. play. Yeah. So when we, we got there, they were very, very happy with what they saw with me. and. When we came back, they just said, no, nah, you can't go to Zimbabwe, you just have to sign a contract mm. before going back. Because we thought we were going for two weeks and coming back. And, you know, when you get such a, an opportunity, there was no way that I was going to let it in, pass, pass by. Yeah. So we just signed our contracts without, without anybody. Nobody was there, no agent, nothing. We just mm. were, were happy with what we were given. And we, we just signed a contract. And we flew back coming... Uh, to Islanders, not to sign a contract. Oh, to so pick up my big man, my old old Before they even sold me, I had signed a contract. Yeah. So, uh, think so much <laughs> so, yeah, so mm. when we came back, uh, the, uh, the two clubs had already spoken and they'd agreed. So we came back to, to say goodbye to, to Islanders. Uh, there was a game that was being played over the weekend uh, that was supposed to be our last game for me and Senzo versus Eiffel Flats yeah. in, 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 in Kadoma, I think, yeah, Kadoma. Yeah, in Kadoma. So that was my last game uh, with the Islanders. Uh, we drew one all. Uh, I scored the, the, that last uh, goal uh, for my club. Then that was the, the last time uh, that I played for Islanders versus a few plans. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. You know, yeah, like you are saying, that destiny was already was yeah. already set, and you, you were just going. You were just going, and now you you were about to start your European your European career. Okay, we're just gonna go for a break, guys. We're just gonna go for a break. When we come back, we wanna hear a little bit more about Cyprus. Then we want to hear how he moved to South Africa. Don't move away. We are going to be back in a moment. Nyaradzo, we strive to continuously bring convenience to our clients. Nyaradzo Group is proud to introduce Sawi, a new virtual chatbot assistant on WhatsApp. With Sawi, you are now able to interact with us from the comfort of your home and can be assisted anytime via WhatsApp. With life assurance products, diaspora products, applying and assessing your policy, payment platforms, claims information, and any other queries concerning payments, policy information, or products and services. Simply WhatsApp Sawi on plus 263-712-992892 or visit the link showing on the screen to register and start interacting and receiving notifications from Sawi on WhatsApp. Now, join in and experience a new level of convenience 24 hours a day with Sawi. Losing the person I loved the most was one of the hardest things I've ever had to face. 
And because I was away from home, it made it much more difficult. That is when I saw how important it is to have a friend. A friend to ease the burden. A friend to take care of things when you can't. A friend to help you get home. Welcome back in touch with the legend. We have got Joel Lupacha. Now he is starting his European career in Cyprus. As I said, the Rugby Star team is going to be the team. Which team was this? Uh, it was called Ayer Pafos. Yeah. Mm. It's a club that's in Pafos. You know how they do it in Europe. Yeah. When usually it's Arabi is always yeah. Arabi FC, it's mm. Blau FC. So it was called. It's called Ayer Pafos even now. They mm. still play. Uh, it was just a, a small club mm. when we got there. And the, the history that they were telling us about that uh, they will get promotion to the PSL and get re relocated the next season. Mm. And they fight again? Fight again to try, yeah. So when we got the, uh, I think for the five seasons that I, I stayed there, the team was never relegated. You stayed there for five years? Yeah, for five years. Yeah. How was it? How was the stay? No, it was it was beautiful. The, the 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 town is full of beautiful people, very very good people. I wanted to say, I, I thought you wanted to say the town is full yeah. of beautiful women. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, women, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful people. people. <laughs> but we were treated yeah. well there. You know, I think when we arrived, uh, we were the only blacks, the only two blacks in Paphos. So. Ooh. We were like in amusement park for sure when we yeah i wanted to ask kids, yeah. you know you'll have kids coming to poke you to to make sure you human and but we, we didn't mind because those people were we didn't we were never racially abused in yeah i was gonna town. ask that as well yeah, we never people, you never encountered any no, racism they would even invite us to your, to their homes you know the supporters will say you know can you come for dinner you know? mm. It was very nice, but it's totally different when you go to play in, you know, other towns who were racially abused. Because those who cool. were not yet used to, to black people. Yeah. It was Namar. They were used to black people like uh, Anna, Anna, Anna Michael Shad, Jordan. Anna Michael Jordan. They, yeah. will, they will visit. The, you know, Cyprus is a tourist attraction area. They will mm. visit. They, they were used to those people. But it's also now, you know, as Africans, it was totally different. But uh, in Paphos, we treated like kings. Even mm. now, the respect that uh, they have for us is is because of what we did. Like I said, yeah. the team was never relocated for those five seasons that we were there. It was a top team. Then, yeah. then you, then you, then you moved from 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 Cyprus yeah. to, to South Africa. Was it direct from Cyprus to South Africa, or it was via Zimbabwe then South Africa? No, it it was not direct. Uh, yeah. There was a club that wanted me in in England, Sheffield United. Yes. And so I went there after after I played well, in represented Cyprus. the country well in the 2004 Afcons. Oh yeah. So yeah. I was invited that they wanted to replace Peter Lofo by then who was moving to Mamelod Sundowns. So everything went well, and there was just a, a small glitch. Yeah, English, that, small yeah, glitch. Yeah, that uh, made me not sign for for them. But everything was agreed. They, what happened? Um, you know, when I uh, when I went there, we were supposed to play in Nigeria uh, here in Zimbabwe mm. for for the 2006 uh, qualifiers. Qualifiers, yeah. Yeah. So they they Zifa sent a letter to Sheffield that we need the guy to come back. But I was on trial. It was difficult, you know. I at first I said to to them, no, I can't, because this means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family. Yeah. Uh, I need to make sure that I wrap everything, then I can go. But also there was no time. The side they needed me, the, the country needed me. So in the end, it was a, an issue. You could you know we'll end up reporting you to FIFA. So Sheffield had no choice. 
Nick, Nick uh, Neil Wanok was the, the, the coach. coach there, yeah. So he came to me at the hotel and said, no, you know, we don't want to have problems with, the, with, your, country. with your country. You go and play. Then on Tuesday, your ticket will be ready so that you come back. Then you can sign everything. Because then uh, uh, Makamuri was representing me. He's the one who was speaking directly yeah. Yeah, with me. Yeah. So they spoke also to, Mac to Makamuri. No, the boy is coming. Then on Tuesday, put him back on the plane so that he comes back. So during that week when I came here, uh, Keith Gillips, you know, he used to play for Newcastle. Mm. He play, played for also for Manchester United. He went there for trial. So in the end, they signed it, was, him. it was a matter of a, a, a rookie or somebody who has been playing who understands. So they signed him instead of me. And when we came here, we played. We also lost to Nigeria. After that, now when Makamro was calling Nick, Nick was, no, I'm sorry, guys. We have already, already filled that. Uh, yeah. that's, so that's really bad. Okay. That's really sad. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's football. What can we do? It, it happens. But, but what do you feel? Do you feel that probably maybe uh, Zifa could have let you stay so that for your career, mm. live out the Nigerian match, or you, you okay with what happened? Nah, for now, like I said, that uh, I feel like my career was planned. Yeah. Now I understand, the, though then I was a little bit disappointed that uh, maybe these people should have let me stay. But you believe that uh, some uh, things happen for a reason? Some things they happen for a reason, and I'm that kind of person who doesn't want to 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 all things. So I just let go and said, nah, mm -hmm. it was not meant for me. Uh, but maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe uh, I could have been somewhere now, because then I was, you know, on, on top form. Yeah, it's really sad. You know, uh, your story actually, uh, I relate. I relate. I had a similar story, but uh, it's something that uh, maybe when I, one day when I come on the show, I'll also, <laughs> I'll also narrate my story. Almost similar, almost like, like identical, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it's something, for, uh, a story for another day. Uh, then, did you go back to Cyprus uh, from there now? When you're supposed to go to Sheffield, you are here in Zimbabwe, you played against Nigeria, we lost. Uh, Where did you go so from? When when I wanted to go back to Cyprus, uh, the door was shut for me, because I'm... yeah, because uh, there was a new coach that had come in and he had never seen me play, so also he gave me an ultimate that uh, if you're not here by this date, I'm closing the door. But uh, because in you know, already at Sheffield, uh, Neil Wanoke had already spoken to me direct that uh, we're going to to take you. So you were yeah. confident, so, so you had already... Yeah, I was very confident yeah. that Diana, and I told them, no, I'm no longer coming. So after, after everything, I think I stayed for six months without a club. Ish. Yeah, and met him was at Highlanders uh, then, so I would go and train with Highlanders. He, he really helped me a lot. I, I trained with it. At one stage, I, I was thinking of maybe... Signing a contract, signing with, a contract them with them again. Yeah, until Orlando Pirates came uh, for me. Uh, Ivan Koza called me direct uh, that he wanted me to come. So they bought a ticket for me to go to South Africa. And they booked me at, at Mill Park Hotel. And, uh, but the problem is I was a full international. Mm. I, 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 I differed a, a little bit with how they wanted to do things because they said I must go for trials. And I said, no, no, no. Not here. I've played in Cyprus. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I almost signed in Sheffield, did United. You, did, did you not see me at AFCON flying there? Yeah. They wanted me to come to South Africa. And never tried. No, I can't. So yeah. I, I think up until now, he, he, he had given me a nickname. I even because says, ah, this one is Mkavi. This, yeah. This, I, I, <laughs> Difficult to do. Yeah, because he will send yeah. people to the hotel to say, go and take that player to come mm. to training. And I'll be like, no, 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 I don't do that. Mm. Let's agree first. Let's sit down, we agree a contract, and yeah. I go to train. Yes. Because uh, you, you, you know, you know what you're getting. Yes. Yeah, so it dragged a little bit, but I trained one day with them. I yeah. went at one stage, uh, Dara Dina. He called me with time because dinner was still at uh, Paris. Paris. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I went for for one day training there, 
and I scored. I don't even know that goal now. I scored it, but it was a beautiful goal that mm. everybody took notice. And Papich was the head coach. He really liked me. Yeah, Costa Dean Papich. Yeah, yeah, he really liked me. But uh, when I sat down with the, the management, uh, the offer was not good for me. Mm. Yeah, the offer was not good. And in the evening, I think around 11, 12 at night, uh, Koroa pitched up with the uh, pizza. They just took me away from that hotel. You know, Ivan Koza knows everything. So mm. they had to come at night to steal me. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so they they came and took me. We we drove to the airport. We had coffee there. It mm. so express that uh, I, I want you. I, I had already told Kaitan that he must talk to you. But Ian told me you are here. So that same night I had already agreed, you know, mm. to, to, to move to Supersport. That's how it. That's, that's how, how you it, train. That's, that's how, how you train Super Sport. Super Sport. Yeah. How long did you play for Super Sport? I think for two seasons. Two oh, seasons. Yeah, but the first season was not good. Mm. You know, he, I went there, uh, even though the coach had uh, brought me there. He had also a lot of players that were playing in my position. Tikhang, Mabalang. Uh, there was Dan Clayt. Uh, mm. There was also Jabu Pule Machala. Oh, Jabu Pule had also yeah, moved yeah, there. Yeah, he had also yeah. moved there. We had so many players that were playing in my position, so it was for me to, to get a breakthrough. It was difficult because my work permit took too long, mm. yeah, to be sorted out. So when it was out already, the boys had cemented their place. So yeah. I always played those cameo roles. But even if you ask uh, Kaitan, he will tell you those cameo roles. I remember this other game we were playing uh, APSA final. Uh, they they gave me 15 minutes to play. Mm. I scored two goals. The team was uh, was uh, down one nil. Uh, I scored two goals. We won. Yeah, I watched that match. Yeah, we won. Brilliant the, performance. And they they made me the man of the match. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. Man of the match. <laughs> so I was playing yeah. with Camiros. It was really really difficult. Yeah. And then until because oh and Takamo was a big fan of me. Yeah. So until there was a situation whereby Supersport wanted. Kakle Komashek, who was at uh, Platinum. Uh, Platinum. Then Oye Pekama said, no yeah. problem, give me Joe. Yeah. If you want Masheko, give me Joe. Yeah. And then, it, because Pizzo wanted Masheko so bad, Takama wanted me so bad. So that's so, how I ended up so uh, swapping, going to, to Platinum. Oh, yeah. that's, where, that's where you got injured. Yeah, but my stay at Platinum was beautiful. Yeah. You know, playing for a coach who believes, who in, believed you, in you, yes. knows what you can do. Uh, Takama believed in me. He just he wanted to build his team around me. Everything was centered. Every play was centered around on my speed because yes. the, this is how he played. This is how he wanted football to be played. He made me Makai Poramupi. Then he will do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> it made my stay very, very easy, but unfortunately, uh, for the first time in the the whole career, I I, I never missed a match mm. because of injury. So that was my first injury that I had, and it was bad. Yeah, it was a bad injury. We'll come back to it later on. But we all just want to get into your international career. You you, you played for Zimbabwe from the under 23s. You didn't yes. play in the under 20s. No. You only started with the under 23. You told you, you said that in Dubai it's gonna. Clemens Westerhoff. Yes. And that he drafted this. Which game was this? Which 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 match was your first match for the for the my, under twenty three? My first match for the under twenty three was in Botswana, uh, under Gibson Omela in the, the late Peritak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then uh, I was also playing cameo roles, like I said, uh, because they had already a, a team that was in place. Yeah. Then Clemens said you draft him. So being drafted, it was going to be difficult, you know, to just go and walk straight into the team. But uh, my my good times in the under-23s were when uh, Clemens Westhoff took over the team himself. Yeah. So my first game was in Uganda. We went to play in Uganda. That was my first game when we were playing for we, the qualifiers of the Olympic, the Olympic qualifiers. In my first game, I scored two goals in, mm. in Uganda. Then we... We came back here to play Angola, uh, and you remember the Nigeria game, yes. the, the famous under-23 Nigeria game. That so, was your third game? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was my, you were flying? The, now we fly. You were flying in that game? Flying, and yes. also it's always good when you play for a coach who believes in you. Yeah. You know, he believed in me, because after that, after he, he left, I, my, my career in the national team also went into wilderness. 
Yeah. Yeah. There was never called back again. And then when 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 did you when did you get called back again? Because we are now in the national team now with the with the with with Sunday Chitam, was it? Yeah. Yes. How did yeah. that come about? Uh, uh, it was 2003, I think, when uh, Mof said all the the foreign players must report for duty. Oh yes as I, well I, I, that, I that was cash. also when i was also recorded <laughs> <I remember. laughs> so we were in the same boat we the same boat when we we were given that lifeline yes. so you, everybody I, just I report want, for camp i want to see everybody yes. so that uh, maybe tokona kusia somebody out there you mm. know instead of going with the guys that uh, play the qualifiers and stuff because I had not played even a single game. Yes. So we just came to that El Salvador game and it changed everything. It, yeah. it changed who I am today in terms of the national team. Because after after game, that's when he told me that you, I want you to come uh, to the preliminary team that's going to be preparing for AFCON. Yes. Yeah, so that's how I, I got back into the national team. Then we started preparing. For of course, tell me about this day. There is this day after we have finished preparations, training, and then there was this day, the final day when the manager was supposed to announce yeah. the 23 that are yeah. traveling for the first time ever in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe was going to the off court. Yeah. How was how, how, how did you feel? How did you feel that day when we were waiting? for that announcement that who are the 23 that are going because we were like almost 30 of us in camp yeah. and only 23 were going yeah all i can say is if uh if what they keep talking about that uh, jesus is going to come back to call his people <laughs> uh, to heaven yeah. uh, that feeling was almost like that it was it was difficult it was the most the most difficult day you can ever have as a man you know you yeah. wake up in the morning they're telling you that we are going to announce it on tv they are not yeah. they didn't even they're not telling it. you yeah. yeah on tv uh it was difficult because even at crest i don't think there's any pot to eat <laughs> maybe peter <laughs> maybe peter yeah peter, yeah. peter, peter yes. nh, NH they, they knew they, are, they were sorted yeah. because they knew <coughs> yes they, they were only three goalkeepers they knew yeah, we are going we're going but yeah. the rest uh, it was it was a long day yeah it was a long day and i i, I was sharing my my room with uh, s room it was difficult because s had played almost all the games and between between me and him we knew that he's going yeah you know i knew s would go but the the most difficult for us who did not play my the qualifiers, my qualifiers. yes we, we, we were in the most when difficult you read position the newspapers when you wake up because you know they will they will, they will send their, their proper team that might go yeah i, I remember there was the herald the, all those papers the chronic all those papers you read the papers and you don't even see your name yeah you're not there because people they don't know you they they, they didn't see you but uh, i think the more it's seen enough so up until that time when <laughs> Sheriff was calling me. I, did, I didn't want to listen to anybody. That they would say, Alois Punji, uh, Peter. I was just waiting for Joe Lupash. Yeah. Only that is the name that I was waiting for. And, and I when think I came, was... I came at number 13. Yeah. Yeah, at number 13, I heard him say Joe because I was the only one there with Joe. <laughs> when he said Joe, I, I went to took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this way to. <laughs> <laughs> this way it was just too much. And yeah, it was it was difficult. The following come the following day now where now the the the, the newspapers will be, you know, questioning. Yes. Yeah, with your inclusion, why you're there and, how did how did this yeah, how did this come about? Why, how why is it there? Mm. Zenzo Moyo is the top striker there in his team, but they left him out, they mm. put him so it was really difficult, you know. Put yeah. in that plane, knowing that uh, your your people will have doubts about you. Talk of yeah. talk of boarding that plane mm. at the Ayarare International. Yeah, we, How are the feeling? Our green blazers. They talk, yes. Yeah, it was the, the, the best feeling. The best feeling. The best feeling being the first time that uh, Zim has qualified to go and represent. It was the best feeling. Yes. Then we get there when we played in our first match and uh, we we lost. We lost to Cameroon mm. and we lost to Egypt 
Then we played in the game against Algeria, against Algeria, and we needed to win that by three clear goals yeah. for us to qualify. Yeah. And you got on the, you scored a wonder goal. Take yeah. us through it. Yeah, it was, you know, it was difficult. The tournament was difficult, playing with the top, top players that yeah. we pitted against. We were in a difficult group. Difficult. Cameroon, Algeria, yeah. Egypt. Yeah, but I think that we, was cruel. we held our own, you know. It's, it's a tournament that I'm not ashamed of. It's a yes. tournament that I'm proud of. But uh, I remember also, you guys, you, you knew that I, I could run with, with the football in my feet. Or yeah. that. I remember uh, people from the bench, they kept saying, Ah, Joe, I'm going to go to the bench. Yes. So when, when, when Harry passed me that, that ball, I think we, we, had, we had defended, you know, an attack from Algeria. Yes. He just passed it just outside the 18 area, outside our 18 area. And when I looked at uh, uh, Algeria, because they were pushing also, they, they needed to win the game. Yes, they, were, they needed to yeah, seal so the competition. So when I looked at the well, defense, yeah. there was only three guys. And I was like, ah, up, ah, don't mind up. So I just told myself, the, Peter is not there, because they were going to defend. Peter yes. is not there. At the, let me just run at these people. Whatever. You were alone? Yeah, I was You alone. went by yourself? So I just said that. <laughs> it's a gym bomb test. Yeah. yeah, so when I tried, I got to die. I'm no longer uh -huh. holding back. That went. That went. <laughs> <laughs> the athlete yeah, is back. I, I used to that do is that. Brilliant. I used mm. to do that a lot in Cyprus. I okay, did that. Yeah. I, I know people always say, uh, he scored a beautiful goal versus Algeria. I used to do that a lot in Cyprus. Mm. I, I will run from my own 18 area until Toko is or until I create. So it's something that I've I, I done before and something that I've always, you know, did. So you know, it made it look like a beautiful goal, but I had scored uh, yeah. similar goals before. No, but we, we, did, we, did, we, we, never, we never watched them, we never saw them, we saw that one. We saw that one, the world, Jerry, you know, it was actually brilliant. You know, we celebrated as if we had qualified. But we had a glimmer of hope at that time. We yeah. thought, you know what, we can actually score another one, then we can qualify. Because we wanted, that we wanted to win by three, three clear goals. But, you know, we celebrated that goal like we had qualified yeah. because that's how brilliant it was. Unfortunately, we couldn't, yeah. we couldn't qualify. But like you said, we were not ashamed. Yeah, and also yes. remember we, we had been promised a, a big winning bonus. Yes. And they, they, they thought we were going to lose. Yes. And they put a big, big bonus to say, if you win, <laughs> we are going to give you such money and we won. Yeah. yeah. And they had to give us our money. Yeah. No, no matter how, even if we didn't qualify, they had to give exactly. us. Yeah. But it was, yeah. it was quite nice. It was quite yeah. nice. It was quite a very good experience. Yeah. Then you came, you came back. That's when you did the, the, the trials with Orlando Pirates. Yeah. Then you went to Supersport. Yeah. Then you got, you, you got injured yes. and uh, you... You, you were out for, for, for a period. How was the feeling when you were sidelined? Did you ever think that you were going to come back and play again? Because when we watched on TV, when you got injured, mm. it was horrific. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I had hope because yeah. uh, the doctor who operated on me, when he came to look at the leg, he just said, I know, six months you'll be walking. Six months you'll be That was good. Yeah, so he, yeah. he's the man who gave me hope. Yes. Otherwise, uh, when I was being transported, I thought they're going to amputate the leg because he there was, was no broken. bone. There yeah. was no bone that uh, you know was holding. Uh, both uh, bones were, and the, the leg was bent, you know, and stuff like that. So I just thought, ah, it's the end. But when he told me six months, he, you know, he gave me hope because I came back and I played also for the national team after. Mm -hmm. that or if you can judge. but uh, you know you are no longer the same yeah you're no longer the same and my thinking was a, a way of bowing out as a footballer and going into coaching because this mm -hmm. is what I've always wanted to do you know yeah. I said one day I want to go back to Cholochi and help these people yes. uh, the way the same way that I was helped there are a lot of uh, Joel Patras out there, it's not only Cholocho, yeah. uh, so many places. So I just told myself, I have to look at a way of helping these people by, you know, becoming a coach. Then you are now a coach, you're coaching at Golden Eagles, isn't it, at yes. the moment now? Yes. How is it going? No, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful setup, a beautiful club with uh, beautiful people that uh, love football. 
it's, it's very, very professional. Very professional. Very professional. Very, yes. very, the, the atmosphere is very good. Yeah. I won't lie. The atmosphere is very good. So we, we just hope that uh, whatever that we want to achieve, we will achieve it, you know, together as a family. Yeah, I hope so too. You know, the very professional side, and uh, we also hope that they do well so that they can actually go up and actually uh, show others how professionally uh, football can be run. So that's Golden Eagles. Joe Lupasha coaching Golden Eagles in the first division at the moment. Guys, we've just run out of time. We would have loved to carry on talking to Joe Lupasha, but uh, we don't have any more time. But it's just left for us to say thank you very much for coming to the show. It has been difficult to be honest to bring you on this <laughs> show, but we are, we are here now. It was nice listening to your story as well, the ups and downs and every and all the successes. Guys, we have run out of time. We are now going out, but we are happy to have had Joel Lubasha at last. Thank you very much. Nyarazo Group, they are powering the show. We are proud as well. Guys, my name is Alois Bunjira. Let's meet again next week when we bring you another legend to talk about his life story, footballing story. But for now, we are out of here. Let's meet next week. Cheers.